Hello everyone, I'm Donnie from Thermaltake USA, and today I'm going to show you my take on building in our new micro ATX case, the V150 TG. I like to start by removing the case's panels, fans, and any accessory kits so I have an easier time installing my other components. For the motherboard, I'm using an ASRock B450 MAC, and I'll be pairing that with a Ryzen 5 3600 CPU. The cooler I'm using has its own mounting hardware, so I'm removing the motherboard's original backplate. To add a splash of color, I'm going to be using our 3000 MHz Tough RAM RGB. I'm installing two 8GB sticks, giving me a total of 16GB of memory. Before dropping in the motherboard, the rear I.O. shield is installed to the case. Once I line up the mounting points to the standoffs, the motherboard is ready to be secured. I'm using the TH120 ARGB AIO to cool the CPU. It comes pre-installed with the Intel bracket, but it's very easy to swap to the AMD bracket. Because the TH120 has a metal backplate, I'll apply the provided sticker on the back of the motherboard to prevent shorting. This step is only necessary if you're using an AMD CPU. Thanks to the large motherboard tray cutout, mounting the backplate is super easy. A touch of thermal paste and the pump is ready to be installed. I decided to go with a push configuration for the radiator and mounted it to the front panel. This gave the AIO's tubing a natural wave and I was digging the look. I'm using three pure ARGB 120mm fans for the radiator additional intake, and rear exhaust. The fan pack comes with a 3 to 1 PWM splitter which is perfect because the motherboard only has two fan headers with one already dedicated for the pump. I'll plug in the case's I.O. connectors first before installing the graphics card. The case's power, reset, power LED, and HDD LED connectors are the smallest of the bunch and no matter how many systems you build, they can be tedious to work with. 
The motherboards usually label or color code where each connector goes and in what orientation, but if you're confused where to connect each pin, check with the motherboard manual. A little tip for you guys, if the label on the connectors fade or you're not sure which side is the positive wire, on the other side of the connector will be a triangle, and that identifies the positive wire. To access the PCIe slot covers, the support brace can be slid back or removed completely. I'm using the ASUS GTX 1660 Super. I think its length fits the overall look and power port lines up well with the lower grommet. For storage, I have a Seagate Barracuda SSD. I chose the lower SSD mount to consolidate and minimize exposed connectors. To install the SSD, three rubber washers with screws are applied to create a sled mount system, making it easy to remove and reinstall. For extra security, I used a fourth screw to lock in the SSD. Powering the system is our smart white 500 watt PSU. It is a non-modular power supply so there will be some unused cables. But with some zip ties and the case's full length PSU shroud, I will be able to bundle those unused cables and tuck them out of sight. With all the components installed, it's time to plug in the power cables. Starting with the CPU's 8 pin, motherboard's 24 pin, and the GPU's 8 pin. I zip tied the additional PCIe connector to make sure it doesn't hit the GPU fan and for an overall cleaner look. Now with everything connected, I can pull the cable slack and start tidying up. I routed most of the cables along the edges of the case and tied them down. The 24 pin and SSD cables gave me a challenge, but I was able to settle on a look that I'm happy with. After a quick final check, it's finally time to put the case back together. That's it for my build in the V150TG. It was easy to put together and I really liked the way it turned out. If you want to try your hand in building the system, we will have the product list in the video description.